talk about our featured award. And you'll remember that our honorary co-chair was Tonette Walker. There would be no one more fitting, more perfect for that honor, except this year she has an additional one. And so we needed someone to step into those big shoes to fill. Will you join me in thanking tonight's honorary co-chair, Diane Hendricks. whether you consulted your program or whether you have been an avid reader of rightwisconsin.com that our featured award is named after one of the icons of the conservative movement, the great Margaret Thatcher. Britons were hungry for change when Margaret Thatcher moved in to 10 Downing Street. She was a woman surrounded by men who quickly rose through the ranks. And it didn't take long for her to claim her top spot, crack down on opposition, and to clean things up. No! 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 During her 11 year reign, she worked to slash taxes, squeeze back state spending, and take a hard line against unions. She earned herself a reputation for being unapologetic in her beliefs. And we hate it, fuck. But it's hard to argue with her obvious common sense approach. I knew that we'll only get to the kind of country, the kind of prosperity, uh, the kind of standards which I wish to see. If everyone says, it's my job to do my best. This commitment to personal responsibility, along with her tough stance against the Soviets, led to the nickname the Iron Lady. The Russians said that I was an Iron Lady. Politically and personally, she was like nothing Britain had ever seen before. <laughs> and while critics and supporters continue to disagree on what her legacy may be, the fact remains, she changed the face of conservatism forever. Man's right to work as he will, to spend what he earns, to own property, to have the state as servant and not as master. They are the essence of a free economy. one of my mentors, Wisconsin's amazing first ever female Lieutenant Governor, Margaret Farrow. Will you join me in appreciating all of her contributions to Wisconsin? Our 2013 Margaret Thatcher Award winner, Margaret Farrow. When the committee gathered, though, to talk about who should receive the Thatcher Award this year, we kept coming back to the virtues of Margaret Thatcher. Perseverance, grace under fire, leadership through action. It became clear that there was just one woman we should honor, Tonette Walker. If you ask Tonette and Scott about their proudest achievements, they would both immediately say, Matt and Alex. We feel it is only appropriate to welcome them to the stage to introduce their mom, Matt and Alice Walker. Hey, mom. <laughs> you know, over the past four years, we've been through a lot. But you've been strong for Matt and I, for Dad, and Grandma and Grandpa. And the rest of our family sitting at the table behind you, you know, Shelly and Kathy and, and Polly and everybody. And, you know, you've been an incredible role model. Growing up, you didn't have much, you know. And you still persevered, you did. And you, you do that for us all the time. You keep our family together, and uh, you're finally getting an award for it. Although, you know, you've, we've known for a long time you deserve it. Mom, we are so very proud of you. I know the entire family is. Um, and, and as Alex said, we know that you haven't come up with a lot when you were growing up. But a lot of those characteristics that 
your grandmother and, and your, your parents, Grandpa Tony and Grandma Jerry, are looking down so proud of you right now. And so we're so very grateful to have you as our mom, and we really do appreciate everything that you've done for us. And so uh, I guess just in total, or in closing, excuse me, um, we're just so very grateful to have you as our mom, and uh, we're all so proud of you. I know I speak for everyone here tonight, just to say that we are so proud of you. Congratulations to Tanette Walker, the winner of the WriteWisconsin.com Margaret Thatcher Award. The Margaret Thatcher Award is presented by Jack and Patty McKeithen. Tanette Walker was a force long before she became Wisconsin's first lady. Her resilience is especially impressive given all that she's been through in her life. Throughout her life, Tanette Walker has been dedicated to helping others. She took leave from her job to care for her ailing mother at one point and again took care of her father when he was ailing. And her first lady now that maintains a full schedule of putting together the American Lung Association's major event of the year, she also has time to volunteer in other ways to give back to her community and the state. She's been a tireless supporter of Teen Challenge, Fostering Futures, and Boys and Girls Club of Wisconsin. But tonight, she's honored for her courage and her fire. Margaret Thatcher Award. Although she is not herself an elected official, 
Her role in the siege of Madison established her as one of Wisconsin's iron ladies. Even in the darkest of hours, her resilience and ability to overcome adversity make her an ideal choice for the Margaret Thatcher Award. letters for this event and I was so surprised when he said to me that I actually was the winner of the Margaret Thatcher Award. I never thought I'd be in company of someone in, in, as inspiring, strong, and unwavering and I'm humble that you believe that I embody your strength. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. to you about the recall, which I know is why I'm up on the stage. <laughs> I'd like to take you back a little bit and talk to you about how I got here. Finding Scott and building our family wasn't an easy road, and without my faith, my family, and my friends, I don't know how I would have found this path. As an adult and a young, as a, as a child and a young adult, my life was filled with chaos. The one influence that was always constant in my life was my mother. My mother was a strong influence on me. Despite us being poor and her being married at 16 and having two children by the time she was 19, she didn't let challenges, hard times, misfortune change how she lived her life, how she parented, or how she treated others. My mother was strong and emotionally resilient. She set a great example for me. And now that I'm a mom, and have my own family, I strive to be like that for my husband and my sons, Matt and Alex. Many of you may not know this, but I was married before Scott. My first husband died when I was 30. That same year, the grandma who helped raise me and my only sibling, my brother Nikki, passed away as well. My mother had this wonderful knack of pulling my family together and keeping us close. This time was no different than the countless times that she had done when I was growing up. She reminded me about my faith, and she reassured me that God never gives you more than you can handle. Even in adversity, life goes on. She reminded me every day that I was strong and that I could get through anything in life, and that I could and would have good things come my way. I have to admit, I really didn't believe her. As you can imagine, these experiences were heartbreaking, exhausting, and repeated fractures in my world made me very cynical. But in, but in a way, losing my brother and my husband prepared me for political life. But of course I didn't know it at the time. As I got along the next few years, I dismissed the thought of marrying again. I had, I had my family and a great group of friends that looked out for me and included me in their lives. I wanted children, but my cynicism left me questioning whether or not any good guys were left. Had I already had my chance, I had to wonder if I'd be alone for the rest of my life. But God had a plan for me. A few, a few years later, on karaoke night at Saz's, I met Scott. <laughs> After exchanging glances throughout the night, Scott left his phone number for me on a napkin as he was leaving. Funny enough, I almost threw that away. I thought, who is this guy who's giving me his trash on the way out? <laughs> I'm asked all the time, do I have that napkin? And yes, I have that napkin. Oh. I also have a napkin. The 
the night that Scott proposed to me at Sass's. He wrote it on a napkin. <laughs> and the night that we got married, we stopped there and he wrote me another note on a napkin. I'm not going to share with you what was on there that night, but it was something very, very sweet. But it's a good thing that didn't throw it out because shortly afterwards, Scott and I began dating. But I was very apprehensive. He was so positive and optimistic, and I was so cynical. He actually told my roommate that the night he met me that he was going to marry me. You can only imagine the laugh my roommate and I had over that. <laughs> he was so sure. At first I thought Scott was just infatuated with an older woman. But you know, Scott had a counterpoint to every concern I raised. When I pointed out our age difference, he told me that his grandparents they were 12 years apart, and they were married for decades. The more I got to know Scott, the more I learned that this was the way he approached everything. I saw that he embodied all the things that I was looking for. Strong values, faith, and stability. Scott's un undying loyalty and commitment has made him a great partner and has made us a great team to build a family and ultimately face the ever adversities that would come as Scott took office. When Scott and I discussed about him running for governor, it was because we were worried about the Wisconsin that we, uh, that we would pass on to our children, Matt and Alex. People often ask me, did I know that Scott's reforms were going to be so controversial? The short answer was no. I knew that Scott was campaigning on reform and I knew he had a lot of big ideas but I didn't know the extent of what that meant. Did I know that any given day, 100,000 people would be screaming in protest outside the Capitol? Did I know that there would be signs that said the only Republican is a dead Republican, the only good Republican is a dead Republican? Did I know that my husband would be compared to Hitler? Or did I know that we would receive death threats or letters about bombs about, about bombs being placed where my family usually frequent. Did I know that a liberal Hollywood movie director would encourage Wisconsin's children to walk out of their schools, my son's schools, in protest, in protest of their father? No, I didn't expect any of that. We certainly knew there would be challenges, but I don't think anyone had predicted the challenges of this magnitude. Even to this day, there are still protesters who sing in the Capitol. On one occasion during the recall, a mass of protesters set up, side up, set up outside our home in Wabachosa. They were causing such a disturbance that we couldn't go home. There is nothing like being displaced from where your family is supposed to be safe and at peace. We were fortunate to have a security team watching out for us, but we were concerned for the safety of our neighbors who had no part in this. There were two little girls who lived next door and an 80-year-old woman around the corner. We felt terrible about what this was doing to them. On this particular day, I was shopping at Mayfair Mall when I received the call from the security team who told me about the protest. I was to stay there. They were going to come right over and bring the boys. We spent the night wait waiting out the protest in the food court. Now, if you ask Scott, he'd tell you that I'm always at Mayfair Mall, so maybe the protesters didn't win that day. <laughs> but there was one story in particular that I'll share with you that shines the light on the entire experience for me. One winter morning, someone had gone out on the frozen lake behind the residence in Madison and walked around in the ice writing slanderous profanity about Scott. When one of our sons woke up that morning, he looked out the window, he saw the profanity, and came downstairs to ask me about it. This incident was particularly painful for me, not because of what was written, at this point we had heard and seen it, everything, but I realized that I didn't have the ability to shield my sons from everything that was going on. I didn't want my sons to become cynical or to question their faith in God or family. This is where I neared my breaking point but I knew that I had to be strong for my children, no matter what would come our way. I knew how cynical, I knew how being cynical can affect your life in a negative way, and I never wanted my sons to go through that. 
Earlier I referenced my mother and her influence on me, and this is where her strength, strength really came to my rescue. My mother's number one job is to provide and protect my brother and me. It just seemed natural during the recall to try to protect my sons. I did the best I could to maintain stability, like my mother had done. If you were inside her house, you probably would never have known the recall was going on. I wanted my sons to have the most normal life possible, and for that, I thank my mother. For many years prior to the recall, Scott and I committed to surrounding our children with the tried and true pillars that kept us going faith, family, and friends. This was more important to us than anything. During the recall, we turned to our family and friends for support. Scott's parents, Lou and Pat, had always been there for us. They had already given up their own independence to move in with us when Scott won the race. Little did we know how much we were going to lean on them for support and how much our boys were going to need them. We are lucky to have many friends. There are a handful of couples who Scott and I spend most of our free time with. We met in a prayer group when our children were in 4K. We've been friends for 15 years and we trust them. Some of them are here tonight and they are extremely important to us. And of course, my dear friend Candy, my first friend, is here too. We love them and thank you so much for being here tonight to support us. Any complaining, any joking, or anything we wanted to get off our chest, that's where we went. We also relied heavily on our faith. We've all heard Scott, you've all heard Scott say that more than any other gesture, we, re, we appreciate your prayers. We received so many tokens of faith along the way, whether it be cards or handmade quilts that every stitch was prayed over. We encountered gestures from wonderful people across Wisconsin, and the overwhelming support helped us tremendously. Faith in God linked us to these perfect strangers who all, who all had and continue to have a wonderful impact on our family. While the recall was extremely difficult, there was good that came out of it. Initially, I knew that Scott and I would be okay, but I was afraid for my sons. I wasn't sure what the recall was going to teach them. I wanted to make sure that they were not going to be changed for the worst. I know this sounds bizarre, but all that they went through, all that we went through, we are better for. for our sons and show them that in a situation when you're under fire, if you act respectfully and strong, you can survive and you can live through it. I look at my sons now and the great young men they become and I know they have emerged stronger. Matthew is so respectful even as he's gotten more involved in politics and has become a subject, has become subject to personal attacks himself. And Alex He's always been tough, and this has made him even tougher. He goes to school at UW-Madison, and he doesn't care, and he doesn't let the politics of the city bother him one bit. And is so much like my mother. <laughs> now, two years after the recall, we've been able to evaluate, evaluate a little more clearly what the experience has taught all of us including our sons, and I'm happy to say it's mirrored our values. Family will stand with you as long, as long as, in a time of need, you draw them close and are open and honest. Our faith has been tested, and we've learned that as long as you turn it over to God and trust Him and let Him carry it, He will get you through it. And our friends, we have relied so much on our friends to be our support system and make us realize what's really important. I just want to say thank you and I'm proud to accept this award and I'm honored to be your First Lady. It has been challenging, but a rewarding ride for me and my family. I can tell you one thing with certainty, we are all better because of it. Thank you.